Natan Sharansky, who I will not introduce because either you all know Natan Sharansky and Dr. Tivia will do a much better job than I am. Um, and then thereafter, we will have some music. Just before Pesach, we've got Yuval Hakin, who is an Israeli musician of the Kedma Band in the UK. So um, without waiting any longer, I'd like to introduce um, uh, our, my great friend, Yaakov Hakin, to say a few words um, on behalf of the WZO and Israel. Thank you, Yaakov. Thank you very much, Paul, my friend. Toda raba le Paul, yoshev rosh a federatia tzionit b'anglia. Toda raba le Yitzchak Zonenstein, a shaliach shelanu, netzig ha'anala b'anglia, al ha'pehilut ha'madima, sh'anachnu usim kan באנגליה ובעולם כולו ואני באמת רוצה לברך את כולכם בחג פסח כשר ושמח מכאן מישראל ושיהיה הרבה בריאות אנחנו מקווים מאוד שבעזרת השם אנחנו נצא עוד מעט באמת מעבדות לחירות מהקורונה הזאת אל החירות האמיתית ושיהיה לכולם חג שמח ואין ספק שנתן שרנסקי הוא האיש המדהים ביותר ללמוד מה זה לצאת מעבדות לחירות, תשע שנים שהוא ישב ב... כ... כאסיר ציון והוא דמות אדירה למנהיג יהודי עם הרבה מאוד גאווה יהודית. אז באמת יישר כוח לכם ושבאמת יהיה חג פסח כשר ושמח לכולם. פנטסטיק, יעקב, תודה רבה לכם וחג כשר פסח שמח to you and your whole family and everyone in Israel. And please, God, will be there in person to come and visit you. Uh, but Thank until you. then, I'd like to introduce Dr. Tuvia Book, who I mentioned before. Um, Dr. Tuvia, thank you for joining us. And I ask you to begin your presentation. Thank you. Good evening, everybody from Modi in Israel. Makom Tov Be'emsa, good place in the middle. So as you probably all know, Israel just had another series of chaotic elections, which has exactly proved the same thing, that Israel is quite insane because the definition of insanity is to repeat the same thing over and over again, even though it doesn't work. So we just finished our fourth series of elections and we have the same results as the other three, which is not much of a result. And one of the reasons why is because you have two Jews and three opinions, as the old adage says. However, when it comes to one person who is a universal Jewish hero, who every Jew agrees about, that is, of course, the feature of tonight's presentation, the wonderful Natan Sharansky. Every Jew, whether religious or secular or left-wing or right-wing or new immigrants or veteran Israeli, he is a universal Jewish hero. And everyone can agree on that one. And then the question, of course, is, as I often ask my youth groups, what exactly is a hero? And Natan Sharansky epitomizes what it means to be a hero. Beyond anything else, totally selfless, leading the way for others. And that's what Natan did. He put other, he put himself before, he put the, the wish to emigrate to Israel for the millions of Soviet Jews as to be his chief cause, more important even than his own very freedom. And I remember growing up uh, in the UK in South Africa, whenever we went to our youth movements, what would we used to do? We used to write letters to the refused nicks. We used to write letters to our members of parliament. We used to go to demonstrations. And I remember as a teenager thinking, what's all this gonna do? So I'm gonna sit there and write a letter to our member of parliament, I'm a refused nick. I even had a metal bracelet, like I'm sure a lot of you had uh, with the refusing's name on. And mine happened to be coincidentally Anatoly Sharansky on my bracelet. And we all used to think now, what's all this going to do? I mean, really our letters, our little teenage letters, but as the great Chinese proverb says, every thousand mile journey starts with one footstep. Every great waterfall starts with one drop of water. And really the entire people of Israel right throughout the world was united in this tremendous movement and like a stream, like a dam bursting, the results we saw in our own lifetime. Who would have thought in 1977 when Natan was arrested uh, that in 1986, literally just nine years later, he'd be setting foot in the land of Israel. And yet it happened. It happened because individual Jews around the world and the various communities said to themselves, maybe we were a bit too quiet and non-active in the Shoah, especially the American Jews, but now is the time to stand up and be counted. 
And we should never say, well, I'm just one person. What can I do? But rather, because I'm one person, I'm going to make a difference. And that's indeed what happened in the, in the 70s and the 80s with the Soviet jury movement. There was this tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, energy in the Jewish world to try and uh, to free our brothers and sisters from behind the Iron Curtain. And it was just, uh, it was an incredible, uh, it was just an incredible movement. And we actually got to see the results as well. Now, one of the most famous things about Natan Sharansky that everybody is aware of just before we go to his, um, um, hear him speak himself, he'll be speaking about freedom, he'll be speaking about Passover, but just uh, before he vanished from the public eye, he managed to give one famous last address. And of course, that was the famous speech he gave to the KGB court in Jerusalem, uh, sorry, in Moscow, where he said, and it's written in his book here, I have his famous book, Fear No Evil. Uh, and he's actually just come out with a new book together with Gil Troy called Never Alone. But this book here, the Fear No Evil book, is based on the Psalm, uh, Psalm 23. And that's what he, one of the things that helped keep him sane. Uh, We'll be talking when we hear about him, we'll be hearing more about how he managed to spend nine years in a gulag, of which half of that time was in total solitary confinement with no books, with no uh, pen, no pencil, no piece of paper, nothing to read, just literally a room. And somehow not only did he emerge, he thrived. Not only did he hold on to his sanity, he came out as the victor because you can capture someone's body, but not their spirit and not their soul. Um, and of course, now is the time on the eve of Pesach, just to go over what exactly he told our court and how relevant it is to all of us today at this time of the Jewish year. So I'm going to read it uh, from my book called uh, For the Sake of Zion, which features uh, Jewish heroes from all over the uh, Zionist enterprise. And it's called Next Year in Jerusalem, Matan Sharansky. And this is what he said in 1978 in July after months of brutal interrogation as the KGB tried to prove a false accusation that he'd actually uh, been a spy for America, which of course he hadn't. His only crime was the crime of a Jew wanting to return to the Jewish homeland, wanting to return to the land of Israel. That was what his actual crime was. And this is what he said before the court as he stood there unbowed. Five years ago, I submitted my application to exit to Israel. Now I am further than ever from my dream. It would seem to be a cause for regret, but it's absolutely the other way around. I am happy. I am happy that I lived honorably, at peace and with my conscience. I never compromised my soul, not even under the threat of death. For more than 2000 years, the Jewish people, my people have been dispersed, but wherever they are, wherever Jews are found, Every year they have repeated the Shana Haba'a Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. Now, when I am further than ever from my people, from Avital, facing many arduous years of imprisonment, I turn and I say to my people, to my Avital, the Shana Haba'a Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. And I turn to you, the court, who are required to confirm a predetermined sentence, to you, I have nothing to say. Now that short speech is one of the epic speeches of the Jewish people that will ever go down in our annals. Because at the end of the day, that's what enabled the Jews to stay Jewish. Now Tan Sharansky was a personification of that. For almost 2000 years, we remained Jewish without physical possession of our land for three reasons, which all came out in that speech. We, we shared our traditions. We shared our sense of community. And most importantly, we always had a she'ifalit Zion. We always yearned for Zion. Wherever we lived, in the good times and the bad times, from Afghanistan to Australia, from Moscow to Munich, all the Jews all around the world realize we have a common past of Adim Hayinu. We were once slaves and a common hope and yearning for the future next year in Jerusalem. And because of all this tremendous surged of passionate um, movement around the Jewish world, led by Anatoly's wife. Um, the unbelievable became a reality. 
Who would have thought? And yet it happened. And there are many images of Sharansky that we remember, those of us who grew up in that time, uh, that are ingrained on our brains. We have the image of him and the grainy black and white footage uh, speaking to foreign journalists in, uh, in, uh, in Moscow. And one of the most unforgettable images is when he was finally released, he crossed the bridge in Germany. And the last thing the KGB said to him was walk in a straight line. So Sharansky being Sharansky, walking zigzags across the bridge. And then the tremendous euphoric welcome when he arrived in Israel later that day to be greeted by tens of thousands of Israelis and swept up towards the cartel. And before uh, the great man himself comes on to speak, uh, I'm going to ask my colleague Steve to play a short film clip where we get to see a collage of all these images and remind us of exactly who Natan Sharansky is and how he moved the Jewish world. Steve. Uh, hold on. Okay. <laughs> this is a love story that brought down the Soviet Empire and freed millions of Jews. Natan Sharansky, human rights activist, Zionist, and refusenik, fighting for his right to be a free Jew. I was haunted, I was arrested sometimes, uh, uh, persecuted in different forms. He also fought for the love of his life, Avital. <laughs> ולאומץ לב כזה לעמוד מול שם בחצי, בצד השני של הרחוב עמדו אנשי קגב. But on the eve of their wedding, they were cruelly separated by the Soviet regime. אני מוזמנת פתאום למשרד של הוויזות. והם אומרים, אם את לא עוזבת, לעולם לא תצאי, לא על את ולא חתנך. אני מחליטה פה בשבילי שאני לא אצא מרוסיה עד שאני אראה את מטון, ועד שאנחנו נתחתן. היינו בטוחים שזה ייקח כמה חודשים, אז שנהיה ביחד. זה לקח 12 שנה. A short while later, in a trumped up trial, Sharansky is accused of being a traitor to the Soviet regime and sentenced to 13 years of hard labor. Sharansky's last words to the court. בסוף אמרתי שכמו שיהודים במשך אלפים שנה היו אומרים אחד לשני לשנה הבאה בירושלים, ככה אני אומר עכשיו לאביטל, לישראל ולעם שלנו לשנה הבאה בירושלים, ולמשפט אין לי מה להגיד. For nine years, Sharansky sits alone in a punishment cell in Siberia, while אביטל runs a worldwide campaign to free him. אביטל הגיע כולה נסערת ונרגשת, היא אמרה... She garners the support of world jewelry and international leaders, including U.S. President Ronald Reagan. On February 11, 1986, the world holds its breath as Natan Sharansky walks to freedom. I think of the sight of Natan Sharansky, still in the dominion of his KGB captors, zigzagging his way across the tarmac after they ordered him to walk a straight line. On that same historic day, Sharansky arrives in the land of Israel to the joy of his mother and wife, to thousands of rejoicing Israelis and Jews around the world. Anatoly Sharansky has fought heroically alone under tremendous pressure as a proud Jew, as a freedom lover person, as a man with a mission, as a devoted Zionist and show that you can arrest a body, you cannot put in prison a spirit. Faith prevails. After his release, Sharansky continues his struggle for the freedom of Soviet Jewry. Natan Sharansky, the hero who inspired a generation, minister in four consecutive Israeli governments, the only foreign recipient of both the Congressional Medal of Honor and the Presidential Medal of Freedom never loses sight of his mission. I want to tell to all the Jews of the world that we together, Jews of all the world, are very strong. 
Today, 25 years after his liberation as chairman of the Jewish Agency for Israel, Sharansky carries his message forcefully. Okay, so uh, it would, there's an old adage that the picture paints a thousand words. And just for some of us to see those images really brings up the goosebumps again, to see how Avital tiny see campaigns for her husband, see the thousands of Jews across the world from all shapes and sizes and political backgrounds and religious believings, Jews and non-Jews as well, who stood together shoulder to shoulder and really helped bring down the Iron Curtain. And it's an incredible uh, example of where there's a will, where there's a way. And uh, in many ways, that that incredible, tremendous achdut is what uh, unity is, what Sharansky himself uh, symbolizes, that ingathering of exiles. Of course, once Sharansky was released, that was just the, the dam burst in 1990. <laughs> One million, uh, one million Jews from the uh, Soviet Union, uh, arrived, former Soviet Union, arrived in the state of Israel to such an extent that one out of five uh, Jews today uh, in Israel, Russian actually is their mother language. So all this miracle happened in our own lifetime. Uh, and Natan Sharansky, in many ways, was that leader. And one of the biggest issues, of course, is what happens next. Um, there's an old adage about uh, why, uh, how he managed to stay sane. There was actually an article in the BBC about it, and that, of course, was uh, to do with chess. Sharansky, believe it or not, was an incredible chess player, and still is. Um, and when he was growing up in the Ukraine, he was a chess champion of his town. And one of his skills, which he never realized what he'd be able to do with in the future, is he could play simultaneous chess games in his head against uh, different components. Little did he know that would end up being his ticket to sanity when he was locked in the gulag. And um, because growing up in the Soviet Union was so difficult, uh, the Soviet Jews had to try and be the best at everything. So he says in a very candid interview, and he has a tremendous sense of humor as you're about to hear, uh, he said, my aim was to be the best chess player in the Soviet Union, but I was good, but I wasn't quite good enough. So then I went to study physics and my aim was to be the best physics uh, expert in the Soviet Union. And I was good, but not quite good enough. So the only thing left to me was to be the best political prisoner. And that I did succeed. And um, it's a very tongue-in-cheek story, but at the end of the day, it's incredibly uh, um, telling that after he came to Israel, he didn't just stop, he didn't just hang up his uh, proverbial hat and, and, and sink into uh, retirement and uh, anonymity, he stayed at the forefront. After this, after all this trauma, he came to Israel, he established a family in Israel, he lives today in Yerushalayim, and then he became a minister for Israeli government, became the deputy prime minister, he became the head of the Jewish agency for a decade, and he was in the forefront, most importantly, of Jewish identity. Um, one of the biggest issues is that... Um, it's what's happening to the young Jews today, where they're losing their identity, they're losing their pride. They think it's a burden to be a Jew and not a privilege to be a Jew. And Anatoly Sharansky, now known as Natan Sharansky, spent 10 years in the Jewish agency and before that in the Israeli political scene, uh, Israeli political, uh, scene doing exactly that, trying, to, uh, trying and succeeding in the igniting Jewish pride amongst uh, the young people. In fact, he actually said that the battle that takes place on university campuses is one where enemies try and convince the Jewish students that in order to be part of the world of justice and freedmen, you have to disengage yourself from Israel and from your own identity. He said, Natan Sharansky, that if you want to be part of the world of freedom and justice, anti olam, then your identity is your source of strength and to fight for these things. And that is why your identity, which is based on your history and our traditions, and of course, is our connection to Israel. So if any young Jew would learn from Natan Sharansky, they would learn the following, that what makes the Jews Jewish, what makes us is not what David Lloyd George said, that the Jews are like a piece of metal who've been beaten over the years so strong, they're like metal, they can't break them. That's a negative, that's part of the answer. The real thing that keeps us Jewish is our pride in our tradition, our shared tradition, our pride in our sense of community, and most importantly, our pride in our land. With all of its problems, Israel is the land of the Jewish people, and that's what we've been hoping for for 2,000 years. 
And that's really what Sharansky symbolizes more than anything else. He personifies that struggle for freedom, that yearning for freedom, and most importantly, actualizing the freedom itself. Uh, by coming, uh, eventually living the dream and eventually coming to Israel and building a life for the future. And I believe that he's uh, actually on right now. Is this right? Yes. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. It's a great honor to introduce you personally from Modin to Yerushalayim to the people of the United Kingdom. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I just finished uh, uh, Dikat Hametz. We are just finishing, and I know that's, of course, very old tradition of thousands of years, but there is new Jerusalemite tradition, which is that immediately after you finish the cut, I met you with all your family and children and grandchildren, go first quickly to some pasta cafe, which is going to be closed in a few hours. So, uh, like, the last comments that you can still meet before you are finally free. And uh, so I just came from this cafe. I had my last pasta meal and I'm very happy to join all of you in another uh, celebration of the Seder Pesach. And I want to tell you that it so happened that my first Seder Pesach was when I was 24 years old because I grew without anything Jewish, without any Jewish, without any Jewish book without any language, without any community. And the only Jewish thing which I had in my youth was anti-Semitism, a lot of anti-Semitism. And as a result, you know that you, uh, that because you're a Jew, you have to learn how to survive in spite of this anti-Semitism. Uh, and you have to be very, the best in your career, that's all. Uh, as parents were teaching, because you're a Jew, not to survive, you have to be the physics and semantics, whatever. So it's like you, there was nothing positive in this uh, being Jewish. Uh, it was like you are born with such a disease, which is written in the idea of your parents, Jew, and you have to know how to survive with this. And only when 1967, Israel entered our life very powerfully, like huge humiliation for Soviet Union. They made so, such big efforts in order the Arab countries will destroy Israel. And Israel emerged strong and invincible and defeated in six days its enemies. And everybody starts looking at you, those who love you, those who hate you, and say, oh my God, how you got, no, nobody said my God, there was no God in Soviet Union. But they say, how you guys did it? And so you understand that for all these people, you are connected to Israel, whether you want or not. And then you start learning in the underground from the books which Jews from America and from Britain and from other places were bringing to us. You start learning about ourselves. Suddenly you recognize it. Your history can start not from communist revolution, not from 1970. Exodus from Egypt. And it's such unbelievable, interesting history. And look at these guys, the, the liberation of the cotton. They are 20 years old. And you're 20 years old. And what all you're thinking about your career. And they are part of this unbelievable history. And all these Jews who are coming from different parts of the world, and they say, oh, your father is from Odessa. My father is from Odessa. We are family, we want to help you. And that's feeling that you have history, you have family. Uh, if only decide it's your family. And that, uh, uh, that you have the state, which is ready to send airplanes to the end of the world, but to help you. That what suddenly gives you strength to start fighting. And so when I started fighting as an activist, we also started learning Hebrew. In fact, in the underground Ulpanim, three, four, five people group. And so one day on my first Seder Pesach, all the te teachers of the, bring all their pupils in the one room apartment in Moscow. And there are like 30 people. None of us knows Hebrew good enough to understand Agada, but everybody prepared some few phrases uh, which he or she understands. And but when it comes to Bahol Dor Vador Kanima Leinu Lachaluteno, it's so easy, easy to, to understand because it's enough to look out of the window to see these KGB guys who are following 
some of us, and I as an activist and then spokesman of our movement was always followed by KGB. So the first center was really this feeling that the Paro is just near, but we are fighting and people of Israel are together with us. And I remember uh, said that a few years after when I'm in a punishing cell and when uh, punishing cell it's a dark place, three pieces of bread, three cups of water and the salt, that's all what you have. And uh, uh, you can become crazy there and they're keeping me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of days in the punishing cell. And then the day when I think that is the day of Seder Pesach. And I simply, I decide, okay, these three pieces of bread, this is my matzah, and this uh, salt is maror, and hot water, that is the sweetest thing which can be in this cold punch itself. Uh, and, and you try to, uh, to tell to yourself every phrase that you can remember from uh, Agada, and I already knew a lot of them. And how powerful it sounds that uh, uh, today we are slaves, tomorrow we are free people, today we are here, tomorrow in Jerusalem. And that was the feeling, for sure it would be, KGB tries to tell you that you are alone, but you know that all the people of Israel at this moment are sitting and praying and fighting for our freedom. And I did know from my years of the activity, being an activist and spokesman of our movement, I knew very well how the Jews of the world are fighting for us. And uh, English, British Jews, that was our main communication line. There was uh, Michael Sherman, the teacher of Russian language from London, who started calling us. I had maybe a thousand telephone calls with him for all these years, which the, uh, we are informing about what's happening from telephones, which tomorrow will be disconnected. And then he's sending to all the other organizations. And, 35 in, in Great Britain and the Federation, of course, they continue their fight together with all the Jews of the world. You have no doubt this feeling of unity, of connection, of our strength. What is this par all? What is this KGB? They all uh, uh, disappear exactly as the army of par all. That was exactly my feeling. And so the day came and I was released and then we continued. Uh, our demonstrations and uh, the Jews, uh, other refusals, and then Iron Curtain fell, and one million Jews came to Israel, and another million Jews went out of the Soviet Union, and all the uh, world is more f free place. So we always have to remember, to remind ourselves, and uh, to our children and grandchildren, that uh, it's Yat Mitzrayim, Exodus, liberation, is really happening in every generation, and we. We were part, and so many Jews of the world, so many Jews of England and America, and of course, Israel itself, were part of this unique struggle, uh, modern exodus of Jewish people. So remind yourselves always about the real strengths which we Jewish uh, people feel when we are united, when we are connected to our identity, when we go back to our identity, when we discover what a unique history we have, what a unique family we have, what a unique country we have, and it gives tremendous strength to fight for yourself, for other Jews, and for practical, for freedom in all the world. That's our message to the people of the world this day and all the other days. And this desire to continue our mutual journey through history as one people is much stronger than all the disagreements which uh, we have. And that's also a very important lesson of the struggle for Soviet Jewry. Uh, it seems like it's one big movement. There were organizations who didn't talk to one another, who hated one another, who uh, we were resistant to the activity of the other group. But then it doesn't matter. As long as all of them felt that it is our historical struggle for, of, of, of fighting family of Jewish people, for KGB, we were all one big anti-Soviet organization, Zionist organization. And that's exactly what we Jewish people are. So thank you, congratulations. And if you have, I see you have some questions, a couple of questions, I'll be glad to answer. Hi, 
Um, I'd like to thank you very much. It's a real honor to, uh, to, to, meet, to be able to introduce and listen to a true Jewish hero, one of my childhood heroes and everyone's heroes. And um, of course, uh, the big question now is, um, what is the big movement now? What can we do now uh, for the sake of the Jewish people wherever we live in the world? What would you say is the most pressing cause now that we need to be activists for? In the 70s and 80s, it was free Soviet Jewry. What is it now in the 21st century? Well, look, first of all, we have our inner problem. It's assimilation, shrinking of our communities. And as I saw so many times, I practically traveled in almost in every Jewish community in the world where there was a head of Jewish agency and even before. And I can say that the, uh, there are so many questions, how you're facing the challenge, how you guarantee continuity of Jewish people. My experience shows that for every community it's true. There are only two factors which, can, uh, which are resistant to this. It's faith and Zionism. Connection to your tradition on, on different levels, but connection to your tradition and connection to the state of Israel. If you have both, you are an active part of family and the future for generations to come is guaranteed. If you have one of these, you have to work on the other, but it's, it's possible. If you don't have both, your grandchildren will not be Jewish. And it's true for Mexico, it's true for Britain, it's true for Paris, it's true for United States of America, for Russia. And that's my experience. So it's strengthening this connection with Israel. It's not simply, let's say, our obligation to fight for our state. It's our desire to guarantee uh, the future of Jewish people. Second, about external problem. Without you, I heard you, I heard on the end, I joined your uh, talk, you were speaking about the anti semitism You know, anti semitism always united Jewish people with all our differences. The moment there was bl uh, uh, blood label uh, in Damascus or uh, Bailey's case or Dreyfus case, Oh, many other famous cities, because all the Jews were united. And it seems it's like guaranteed that that is uh, uh, what keeps us together. First of all, what keeps us together, as you correctly said, it's our pride in our identity and our desire to be part of Jewish people. But the most alarming problem of today is that while anti-Semitism growing at the same time on the left and on the right, the struggle against all types of anti-Semitism, hatred of Jews, hatred of Jewish religion, hatred of Jewish state, is not really uniting many of us. Uh, people on the left prefer to ignore anti-Semitism on the left. And people on the right prefer to ignore anti-Semitism on, on the right. And that's a serious problem. Suddenly, anti-Semitism, which was so obvious that it's something which unites all of us, turns into a political problem. Uh, and that's why I propose this, uh, in order people will feel this deep connection between hatred of Jews and hatred of Jewish state, I propose to see the resemblance when, when there is demonization of Jewish people or demonization of, of Jewish state, when there is legitimization or double standard applied to Jewish people or Jewish or Jew, is a, as a state, it's all the same. This, and that's the essence of international definition. And now there is a struggle for recognizing the, 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 this definition, for recognizing of this deep connection between uh, uh, anti-Semitism on the left and anti-Semitism on the right. And it's interesting that, in fact, many universities in Britain, Great Britain already accepted it. The universities on, in America, the campus of America, there is a huge struggle still ahead of us. And while so many uh, states, even Muslim states like Bahrain, accepted this international formula and agree that we have to fight against demonization of Israel and demonization of Jewish people. There are some Jewish organizations who have doubts, isn't it a restriction of, of the freedom of speech? So we really have to be united in our struggle against anti-Semitism and the enemy is not our enemies. Of course they are enemies. The enemy is our own, our own uh, disability to look above politics, above disagreements, and to, uh, and to fight together against the citizens. It's a very important topic. And again, it all comes to the same. There, we can successfully fight against anti-Semitism only if we feel ourselves 
very proud Jews, if you feel yourselves in, intimately connected to our family and to our state. Excellent. And, uh, that's a very positive message. In fact, just recently I heard Deborah Lipstadt, the famous historian, talking about uh, anti-Semitism. And someone said, what's the biggest problem for the Jews? And she answered very quickly, the Jewish people themselves. Because we also need to focus on well, what unites us and what not divides us. So that's a very important thing. Just sort of one other quick question. Uh, recently you came out with a new book, um, uh, which you wrote called Never Alone with uh, the good friend of mine, Gil Troy. Uh, and you were asked about it. I was wondering after this book, The Fear No Evil, the famous book, why you felt the urge to write another book and what really oh, what, what's that I'll about? tell you, uh, Fear No Evil is a very important document of the struggle and interrogations. And I, I was just out of prison. I was fresh. I uh, spent a lot of time describing the methods, how you're uh, challenging KGB, well, ch because we are still in the struggle. So those who want to understand the nature of the Soviet regime and, and uh, the life of a prison, a prison person and how you can uh, uh, stand against it, of course, that's important book. But in this book, I, I compare three uh, perspectives which I had on the this book is about dialogue between Israel and Jewish people. That's something that I was dealing in the last 40 years, whether I was a Moscow activist, whether I was prisoner of Zion, whether I was minister or head of Jewish agency, I was always dealing with the problem of dialogue between Israel and Jewish people. And there is a lot of debate today are we converging or diverging? Uh, what's happening with the Jewish people? And I thought that my perspective from three different points, from the point of prison, nine years in prison, from the point of Israeli government, nine years in the government, speaking towards two Jewish people in the name of the government, and then from nine years in Jewish agencies, speaking to Israeli government in the name of Jewish people. That gives me a very good perspective to be optimistic. And uh, of course, to analyze uh, what, uh, what are the problems of, uh, that uh, Israel, well, often has saying all these Jewish people, they are really betraying our interests. So some Jewish communities are saying all oh, this government of Israel is betraying our Jewish values. We are speaking very open about it because I was in the most important moments of the crisis. But in the end, the consequences and uh, the my conclusions are very optimistic because conclusion that me and Gil Troy from two different perspectives that our desire to be one people, to be one family, to continue our journey together is much stronger than our disagreements. But we have to, to talk to one another more. That's all. This, uh, this book is exactly about it. It's about that the moment you're part of Jewish people, you're never alone. Uh, they in prison tried to convince me that I'm alone. I knew that they're lying, that I'm not alone. And definitely today we have no reason, even when we are during Corona, uh, virus are sitting at home. We should know, we have no reason to feel ourselves alone, lonely. We are part of great people with a great mission in this world. Okay, and finally, um, in a couple of days, Jews around the world will be sitting having a Seder meal with their family and their friends, wherever they are. But I, I heard recently an interview with your daughter, Rachel, that the yeah. Sharansky family has a very special Seder that they do a couple of weeks before everyone else's Seder. Can you tell us something yeah. a bit about that? No, well, we have two Seders. One, as, uh, as all of us, and the other is three, uh, three weeks before the day of my uh, release. And that's when, uh, with the children, and now already with grandchildren, every year, they're sitting and telling our story and us answering the questions. And when the children and our grandchildren are very, very small, the questions are mainly about what animals I had in my cell and how I played with them. And, uh, and then they become <laughs> serious how you knew what's happening with uh, your wife and how Avital knew what's happening. And then there are questions about Jewish solidarity and how Jewish people were fighting about you, and then about defeat of Soviet Union. So we have made this whole circle with the children, and now we go to this circle with grandchildren, and that's great entrance to the, our second center, which will be tomorrow, because then when we are sitting and speaking about what happened 2,000 years, 3,500 years ago, 
our children know very well that that's not only about the past. It's about today and about our future. Amazing. Thank Hag you so much to everybody. Thank you. Hag Hag that's a wonderful message to leave us with. Yeah. Hag kasher Okay, folks, that was an incredible message. Here's a man who's been through so much. Man, we can't even imagine, as much as we complain with our first world problems, what it must have been like to be in the gulag and a half that time in that gulag, half of those seven years, he sat in a solitary confinement cell. He continues to remain optimistic. And most importantly, he continues to remind us as Jews that we need to focus on not what divides us, but what we have in common. And most importantly, not just to talk the talk, but to walk the walk. Because my friends, to Jew is to do. The first commandment, the first Jew got, Abraham and Sarah, the first Jews, was lech lecha. We've got to get up and go. And just like with the Soviet Jewry movement, we say, well, what can I do? I'm just one person. Our rabbis teach us, lo lecha ham lecha It's not up to us to finish the work sometimes. We can't just say, well, let someone else do it. Because if everyone else would have said, let someone else do it, there would have been no Soviet Jewry movement. And Natan Sharansky would still be sitting in the gulag uh, and the Soviet Union would still be standing. So it's an incredible um, message. As much as we complain how difficult our own lockdown is with, with, our, uh, with our, we've got our TVs and our books and our families and our phones, you know, you, you need to read Natan's story. And I'm just like, here is a man who had literally survived uh, for seven years with a Sefer Tehillim, with one book of Psalms and his mind. Uh, and it's an incredible, incredible story. Uh, it really reminds us of uh, what Victor Frankl uh, taught everyone, that we are masters of our own destiny. Natan Chemansky said, they try to humiliate me, but I can humiliate me. So it's just an incredible story. And he always knew that one day he would get to see his wife and one day he would get to uh, uh, be back with his people in his land. Uh, and a real inspiration for us to hear from a real live hero, and above all, a incredibly soft-spoken and modest man. He's got a lot to be non-modest about. He was literally the only person in the history of the world that uh, received both the Congressional Gold Medal and the Presidential Medal of Freedom in the United States of America. He was a recipient of the Jewish Nobel Prize, known as the Genesis Prize, and just a tremendous amount of achievements. But above all, he, he walks humbly with his God, and uh, it's a real lesson and inspiration for all of us as we go into Pesach, that really what keeps the Jews Jewish is what Natan symbolizes, our love of our traditions, our love of our um, community, of our own people of Israel, and most importantly, the love of the land of Israel, Eretz Israel, Medinat Israel, that holds it all together. And uh, that's the message I think that is a great message to leave with tonight. And now we are going to move over to the music entertainment, after we talk about Torah, Israel, Israel, and Eretz Israel, we're now going to talk about Musikat Israel, and we're moving over to um, uh, to Yuval uh, from the Kedma band. And Kedma, just you all know, is the old Hebrew word for East, symbolizing Israel. We're finishing off our beautiful presentation with some beautiful music. Thank you very much, Yuval. Thank you, Tobia. Nice to be with you. Hello, everyone. Uh, actually, I want everybody to join me for this song. It's a very, it's a very, so it's a song of freedom, song of Pesach. By the way, I'm not uh, broadcasting from Egypt. I'm here in London. Um, I, I would like to invite you to press on the gallery. Uh, on the top right um, on the screen, there is a view button, and then you can move to gallery. That's what I'm seeing. I can see you. Hello, everybody. Wave your hands. Hello, yeah. And I can even, usually, uh, most of the performance, I want you to actually, yeah, please switch on your screen. Uh, most of the performance, I would like you to keep your, um, your microphone muted, but maybe for this song, if you feel, just for a second, you can unmute and you will know what to sing, all right? And that's a song about freedom, and in English as well. When Israel was in Egypt land. Let's see you. Let my people go. Very good. Oppressed so hard they could not stand. Hear you. Let my people go. Yeah, we have a choir. So go there. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell them, oh, Pharaoh, too. Very good, we're going to keep. So Moses went to Egypt land. Let's see you. Let's see you. 
arrows and the stand. And this federation, the world one is choir, yeah. Go down, go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, what did he tell you? Do one more round, but that's actually now in Hebrew. So let's so the translation is Shlach na et amis. Let my people go. So let's see, let's see. Shlach na et amis. That's our little practice, yes? And let's see. So I'll sing the verse in Hebrew. Let's see if you can join me in this one. Maher Moshe Tziva Paro. Let's see you. Let's you Israelis. Give yourself a round of applause to the World Zionist <laughs> Federation Choir, Zoom Choir. <laughs> uh, I think we can, you can join me for some um, Spesar songs. Yeah, maybe I'd me ask, I would like to ask you to mute at the moment. Yes, because otherwise uh, some, I might be cut, uh, my sound might be cut. Um, but uh, yeah, join me for some uh, Pesach songs. Are you ready? I'll start with the Israeli one that is very kind of jolly general. May I ask you, please, mute your microphone this time, because uh, I'm not sure, unless I will ask you so, because I can see some people left the microphone unmuted, and it might cut my music to other people. So if I may ask everybody to mute the microphones, or if someone from uh, Dima, if you can help unmute everyone, and I'll mute, my, I'll unmute myself, please. Shall we do that? I will try, I will try, yeah, thank you. yes. <laughs> It's gonna sing you some uh, pest. All right, uh, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. And join me for this one. That's usually the youngest in the family will sing us. Do we have like a child who wants to sing Manish Tana here? Not sure I can see a lot of children in this audience. If there is, so maybe unmute yourself. Otherwise, I'll sing it. Manish Tana Laila Se Mikola Leilo Mikola Let's do one another, another round. Shebechol haleilot En anu matbili Afilu pam achat Afilu pam achat Halayla ze, halayla ze Shetei peami Halayla ze, halayla ze Shetei peami So I'm gonna remember, remind you some songs from the Haggadah, from the Seder Pesach Let's have 
have actually another, I want to do something more interactive with you. We're going to sing Echad Mi Yodea, Echad Mi Yodea, and mm -hmm. I will ask you if you know. And so if you know what's this next one, without, please, no cheating, not no Haggadah in your hands. And let's see if you know the answers, please unmute it. Echad Ani Yodea, Echad Ani Yodea, Echad אחד אלוהינו, 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 שבשמיים ובארץ. שניים, מי יודע, שניים, מי יודע, אמונו שניים? שניים, רוחות רבים, אחד אלוהינו, 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 אלוהינו. I think we're going to jump a bit forward, so we have a little bit harder. Who knows? Shnei Masar, 12. Shnei Masar, Ani Yodea. Shnei Masar, who knows? It's 12. Shnei Masar, Shiftaya, Achad Asar. Koch Vaya, it's a star. Koch Vaya, Asara. Dibraya. Dibraya, it's the Ten Commandments, the Divot. Tisha. Leda. Yes, pregnant, like a big bell. I'm with the Shmona. Yes, Yemei Mila. Shiva. I have someone is cheating with the set or you know what the answer is. Shisha. Bidrei Mishnah. Hamisha. Mushay Torah. The Torah books, yeah. Arba. Shlosha. Shnei Luchot Abri. Echad Eloheinu. 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 I think the Shlosha Asar, but you can join me. Shlosha Asar, mi yodea. Shlosha Asar, ani yodea. Shlosha Asar, mi daya. Shnei masar, shiftaya. Az achad asar, kochvaya. Azara, divraya. Kisha yechelita, shmona yemegila. well done for joining and knowing the answers. sound is really, really bad. I'm really sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Velo natal anu et hayam dayenu Ilu kara anu et hayam Velo heviranu betocho vechova Velo heviranu betocho vechova dayenu What 
other songs we have for you. This up. On my list, here we have that's a nas, nas, lovely one. But it has a newer adaptation, a newer melody. It goes like that. Vehi she'amda lavoteinu. Vehi she'amda lavoteinu velanu. שלא אחד בלבד עמד עלינו לכלותינו עמד עלינו לכלותינו והקדוש ברוך הוא מצילנו מצילנו מידיו והקדוש ברוך הוא מצילנו traditional tune for this one that I, I, I learned as a kid. Vehi she'amda, vehi she'amda l'avoteinu velanu Vehi she'amda, vehi she'amda l'avoteinu velanu Shelo echad bilvad amad aleinu l'chalo שלא אחד בלבד עמד עלינו מכלותינו אלא שבכל טוב הדור עומדים עלינו לכלותינו אלא שבכל טוב הדור עומדים עלינו לכלותינו והקדוש ברוך הוא יצילנו מידם והקדוש ברוך הוא מצילנו מידם. That's lovely. Um, yes, I also actually I have not more, more, more uh, um, Pesach song, but also had in mind, because it was Sharansky, let, I thought I'll sing you a few um, Russian songs that were translated to Hebrew. Am I right? Those are, my surname is Havkin, or Havkin and that's, that's origin is actually in Russia. I, my Russian is not really... Um, polished <laughs> really really good so um that's for my late uh, grand grandfather um who actually came to london many years ago um but definitely i, and I know a lot of uh, uh, russian songs that was translated to um hebrew and maybe you can join me this one don't know if you know this one <laughs> אז את אמרת לי, לא, לא אשכח זאת, את פגישתנו לעד. ויהי היום, ואנו נפרדנו פתאום. תחול המטפחת, קור טוב של נחת, והתגשם להם חלום. תמו הכפור והדלת. שמש ואור מסביב, בוקר וערב, לילה ואלף, אלף כוכבי האוויר. ושוב היום, ואנו נפרשנו פתאום. חול המטפחת, קור טוב של דחת, ונתגשם בחלום. זורם הנחל, הולך לו אל הים, ולא צומח, הלא נישא ורם. בגדה מנגד, מחלון בקטן, ידעתי מרוסיה, בעצב נשקטה. Oh, Hassan, oh, Hassan. 
clap because I prefer your microphones mute so please mute your microphone but I want you to clap with oh, with a with, um, rhythm That's a, um, a Russian song, this quick one. C'est qui l'a arrêté. Non Oui, la caméra. Ah non, on peut... Oui, la caméra. Tu vois, là, tu as mute. Ah, voilà, voilà. Eh, yeah, donc, please, ask, I'll ask you to, to keep on muting, otherwise we might have a problem of sound. Um, going back to some Pesach songs, how much time do we have? Let's, uh, let's see what uh, Dima says. If you have any special request for, for, uh, for, for songs, so please, uh, you can write in the chat, maybe. I'll try to, to see that. Um, but let's finish with another Pesach song or two. Um, maybe you know this one. Betzet Yisrael Mi mi Yitzrahim Beit Yaakov Me am lo ez Haita haita Yehuda lekotcho Yisrael Mam shelota Hayam ra'a I think this one you know it, that's a good song to end. It goes Leshana Haba Birushalam Abnuya. Leshana Haba Birushala Shana Baba Birushala Shana Baba Birushala Shana Baba Birushala Abnuya Leshana Baba Birushala Shana Baba Shalaim Abnuya I want to wish everybody a very happy Gosher Pesach. It's really nice to be with you in this uh, World Zionist Organization. Free Zoom uh, talk. Thank you so much, Dima, for having us. I'm going to check in the chat if there is any special request, but otherwise, I think we're going to go for our final song. Yeah, I'm just trying. I'm not sure which, which tune or which uh, song is it exactly. So I think we're just going to finish with uh, Salam, hoping for peace. And you can join me. Without singing, but let's see your hands moving. Odia vo shalom aleinu. Odia vo shalom aleinu. Odia vo shalom aleinu ve al kulam. Odia vo shalom aleinu. Odia vo shalom aleinu. 
עוד יבוא שלום עלינו ועל כולם סלאם עלינו ועל כל העולם סלאם סלאם שלום סלאם סלאם עלינו ועל כל העולם סלאם שלום חג פסח שמח, everyone have a great Passover and goodbye! You can see you waving, lovely. שלום. תודה רבה. חג שמח, חג פסח שמח. חג שמח, everyone. חג שמח, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Take care, be safe, be well, have a wonderful Pesach, Passover, and for those who celebrate Easter, enjoy and have a wonderful Easter too. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. 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 Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.